Namaste, welcome to KYG Kaivalya Yoga Gurukulam. We are doing this series called the KYG Shrine series. As we are setting up the KYG Shrine, I thought it is prudent to explain each aspect of the Shrine so you understand that all of these energies are within us and how do we connect to these energies and therefore these series. If this is the first video you are watching in this series, please go back to our channel on YouTube. It's called the KYG Yoga. Check out the playlist called KYG Shrine and you'll see all these explaining uh, different videos explaining the Lingam, the Devi and so on. In this particular episode, we are talking about the Nandi and the Bali Peetam that is behind Nandi. Nandi, why it is Nandi? What is Nandi? Nandi is the name of a bull. Nandi is a Sanskrit word. It, it is the name of a bull that is facing Shiva. Now, in a historical sense, there was a very great yogi called Nandishwara. He was the guru of Patanjali, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Patanjali and a great, a great yogi from the south called Tirumular who wrote the Tirumandaram, which is again a, a fantastic treatise on, on yoga. Their guru was Nandishwar. Nandishwar is actually a yogi. So this form of Nandi is also dedicated to that, um, that yogi who taught us the very primordial principles of yoga. Nevertheless, for the simplicity of our understanding, let's symbolize this. Nandi signifies a bull facing the Shiva. The idea is, number one, that he signifies the soul's journey to the divine. What does he symbolize? He symbolizes what we, called the, what we call the jiva. Now Sundar Ayer, as I identify myself as Sundar Ayer, Sundar is not the jiva. There is a jiva in its role of, uh, in its journey of births and death. In this particular birth, is playing, has adopted this name Sundar, adopted a human form, a male form, and is playing the role of Sundar. A soul is perhaps a good way to um, say an English word for jiva is soul. So let's stick to that word soul or jiva and use them um, as synonyms at this point. The Atma is different, Paramatma is different. So you have Ahankara, Sundar is Ahankara. Then there is a Jiva, which is the Nandi principle in Sundar. Then there is the Atma principle and then there is a Paramatma principle. So the journey towards going towards the ocean. A little pond that collects the rainwater, that pond is Sundar. So that is Ahankara, a little pond, which thinks I am doing everything. So that little pond which can rot very fast, which can dry up very fast. Sundar just lives and dies in a few years. So that ahankara is there. That is ahankara. Then you think of the river. That little pond water overflows into the river and then the river begins to flow towards its destination. That river is the jiva. That is Nandi. Where does the river flow? The river flows towards the ocean. Now as the river merges into the ocean, waves begin to appear. That wave knows and understands it is part of the ocean and yet it is a wave that comes and goes, comes and goes. That wave is the Atma. And then going into the ocean and becoming the ocean is the Paramatma. Paramatma principle is like the ocean. The wave in, waves in the ocean are like the Atma principle. The journey of the river into the ocean is the Nandi principle and the ego principle is Sundar. Okay, just to give you a very brief understanding. And so Nandi is, why Nandi? Because number one is when Nandi sits on the roads in India, nobody can move him. He just decides to go when he wants to go. Even huge 18-wheel trucks and um, carrying 10 tons, 20 tons of material, they'll come to a halt or they have to go around Nandi. Nandi cannot be moved. Nandi. So the idea is, we are so focused in our journey that we become like Nandi, still like Nandi. Once I set my path towards the divine, once I set my path towards self-actualization, once I decide my life has to be an expression of self-empowerment, everything else in my life, all the creative energies have to go around me. I will not move. It no, it's not necessarily ahankar or pride. It is coming from an awareness because I have linked myself to the Adi Shakti which we talked about in the previous video. 
then a powerful Nandi emerges and begins to focus its direction towards the Shivalinga, the ultimate Paramatma principle. When Nandi decides to do that, nothing can move Nandi. The Nandi Vigraha, the idol, is the Jiva's journey back to the source. Nandi is therefore rep a symbolic representation of the Jiva. Nandi has four legs. So this Jiva in this particular birth, um, there are four controlling aspects within which this comes. So dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. These are the four legs of Nandi which guides us towards that. Dharma is right action. Artha is resources that I use towards my spiritual goal. Uh, dharma, Artha, Kama. Kama is my desire that is motivated by the Supreme Consciousness and Moksha is the final liberation from this limited identity. I begin to break free and begin to realize I am part of the Atma and the Paramatma principle. So guided by those founding pillars, the four legs, Nandi begins to walk towards Shiva or he sits down guided by that, strengthened by that. The hump of the Nandi signifies this little ahankara, this little sundar is the hump of the Nandi. The hump in a bull is quite evident, this is the ahankara. The jiva carries this on its back. So that is the essence of Nandi, facing the divine, the journey towards the divine. So from Nandi we come to the Bali Pitam in the KYG shrine the last one, or rather the, actually the first one as we enter the shrine. So if we go to a temple, and someday when this becomes a temple, the first thing you will come across is the Bali Pitam, and then you will have the Nandi, and then you will walk towards the Devi shrine, and then finally to the, the source, reminding us of our journey towards the ultimate. Bali, Bali means sacrifice, Pitam means altar. So there is a sacrificial altar kept behind Nandi. Now, I'm not getting into whether animal sacrifices were made or not made. These are all part of the history that is way beyond our record. So, I want to get into that. But there is a symbolic representation. The Vedantic teachings, the Sanatana Dharma teachings is all symbolic in nature. And we have to understand and it's possible that history mis was misguided. People have actually sacrificed thinking sacrificing an actual animal or doing something is going to get us some special favors. We'll leave that aside. That's not even a point for discussion anymore now. What is being sacrificed at this sacrificial altar? The Sunda principle of the hump is largely guided by three things. One is Raga and Dvesha. We talked about these two energies when we discussed the Adi Shakti principle. I'm always pulled by these two extremes. One is craving, the other is aversion. So Raga and Desha, this craving and aversion constantly, the ups and downs, the black and white, the rich and poor, the good and bad, it's always like that. Every act of mine, every thought of mine is, 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 is between these and invariably we get pulled into these two extremes. So the first thing we actually sacrifice here is give up these two extremes, give up judgment. Give up this good and bad and high and low and rich and poor. Give it up. Give it up here. In other words, give up all these distinctions of caste and creed. Bhagwan Baba's one of the most beautiful teachings is there is only one religion, the religion of love. So give up all the religions here. There is only one language, language of the heart. So give up all of this, which language came, when, which language is superior and inferior. All distinctions gone. So sacrifice that. How do I sacrifice that? When I give up my in, intrinsic nature of Raga and Dvesha. So Raga and Dvesha is sacrificed. Along with that, I sacrifice my ego. Sundar is not the doer. Sundar is merely a hump on top of Nandi. Nandi is the one that is taking Sundar towards the divine, depending on where he is pointed to. And therefore, when Nandi is pointed to Shiva, then Sundar just sits and enjoys the ride. So Sundar has to be sacrificed on this altar. In other words, this when I say sacrifice, it is like understand that I am not alone. I am not an individual cut off from the universe. I am part of a divine plan. And that is where allow those divine energies to find expression through Sundar. Sundar becomes an instrument. Sundar is not the doer. He becomes instrument. He becomes hollow. 
and that is a sacrifice. It's not sacrificing Sundar, uh, Sundar's life is not sacrificed, Sundar's identity is not sacrificed, but Sundar becomes a co-creator with the divine, he becomes an instrument of peace, where there is hatred, he sows love, where there is injury, he pardons, where there is doubt, he sows faith, and therefore the instrument comes into being Raga, Dvesha and Aham, the sense of I-ness as separate from the universe, that Aham is sacrificed on this altar. Then we attain what is called the Paripurna Saranagadi, the complete sense of surrender, surrendering to the forces that are waiting to find expressions through me. I have to find my inner core, what, am I, what is the purpose of my life, why am I here, what is my inner calling, allow that calling to find expression, then all of the universe will begin to, to help you there. Right? That Paripurna Sharanagati and allow that universe to guide your thoughts and actions. When that Sharanagati happens, then the highest vision of life, the goal of life, the highest state of self-empowerment begins to reveal itself to us. And we call that Atma Sakshatkara. That is the journey in the KYG shrine. The KYG shrine represents Kaivalya. Kaivalya is oneness a journey into oneness, an experience of oneness, an abundance of that oneness, where I see oneness reflected in all beings, in all creations, in all aspects of my life. And I embrace that oneness. It is not easy, but it is not impossible. And therefore, let us all embark as students of Kaivalya, as students of yoga, as students of spirituality, Let's embrace that ultimately there is only one consciousness that has become all of this. And our journey back home is going back to that state of unity where the expression of Kaivalya is love. Thank you as always for watching. Stay blessed. Stay inspired. Namaste. Om Namah Shivaya.